He's based in Singapore and works in the IT industry to boot. Orion joins me now. Orion, looking splendid, as always, I must say, uh, in uh, Singapore there. Uh, am I right in my speculation that it was the marriage between the Marcoses and the Dutertes, politically speaking, of course, not suggesting bigamy here, uh, <laughs> which has caused basically a landslide victory? I would say so. I would say that was one of the master strokes of uh, this this campaign. I mean, um, that you know, originally, I mean, a few months ago, almost a year ago, when there were some surveys coming out, um, when uh, when they were not, it was not clear who was going to be running as president and who was going to be running as uh, for, for for vice president. It wasn't very clear, but I bet there was a point where Sarah Duterte was actually the one leading and Bong Bong Marcos was like number two. So um, it was basically a masterstroke. And it's not only those two factions that kind of joined in. There's, um, there's also the faction of uh, former president Gloria Macapagal Arroyo as well, which joined in as well. So there's basically some several factions which joined together. And is it an unholy alliance? Do they stand for the same things? Or are we likely to see uh, deep tensions and strains within this new alliance? To a certain extent, I would say that they, they, they believe in similar things. Maybe not exactly the exact same things, but they believe in similar things. And I think the most common thing that united all of these factions together was um, the, the, the faction that everyone calls the Yellows. So the Yellows are actually the faction of the Aquino family. Um, the, you know, basically, when you talk about uh, Corazon Aquino, who was the one who took over when Marcos was, um, was ousted in 1986, she was always, as much as possible, wearing yellow. And that was kind of like um, in reference to that song tie a, a yellow ribbon around the uh, old oak tree uh, when her husband was uh, was assassinated. Um, so, you know, the, the color yellow was used by their campaign. And that's why they've ever since always been called the yellows. The problem is the yellows. So that faction of the Aquinos and um, the, uh, the designated successors or de designated um, re uh, uh, representatives is that they kind of bungled things, particularly when Noi Noi Aquino, the son of both uh, Benigno Aquino uh, Jr. and Corazon Aquino, when he took office in uh, 2010, he really bungled a lot of things. He made a lot of boo-boos, a lot of major, major blunders, and it really left a very bitter aftertaste. A lot of people got really disappointed and disillusioned with the, the yellow mythology, the, the yellow myth, the yellow legacy. And um, in, in, in many ways, that kind of fueled um, the rise of the Marcuses. I'm not sure, uh, George, if you're familiar with what happened in uh, Typhoon Haiyan, um, when there was that, uh, that major storm and you know th the relief operations weren't very good. That was the turning point that made a lot of people who, who were yellow supporters kind of turn against Noi no Yokino and that legacy. And that's also what fueled uh, Rodrigo Duterte on the national scene in the Philippines. Yeah, you've confirmed my lifelong predilection that any party that bedecks itself in yellow is not to be trusted and not to be given power. And uh, so far in my life, that, uh, that predilection has served me well turned out to be unerringly accurate. These liberals, and we can say for sure they won't be insulted, uh, the Aquino uh, and other liberals, they tried in a devoutly Roman Catholic country uh, to make this all about identity politics, LGBTQ plus I rights and so on, uh, whereas the Marcos and Duterte forces, well, let's, I don't think they'd be insulted if I called them small C conservatives, would they? Probably not. They probably were in many ways centrists. I mean, because like in the case of Duterte, for example, he actually identified originally as a socialist. 
Um, and um, but I, I think the main thing is that they they were not woke. They were not the you know looking at all these these cute little labels of what is considered woke woke liberal you know in that in that sense. So they weren't concerned with that. Yeah, uh, and uh, that is, of course, uh, something that exists here in Britain and in the United States and was perhaps personified during the Trump presidency and, and, and may yet again, which uh, is a useful segue into what the international ramifications of this will be. Uh, the, the US, with some success, a little bit to my surprise, has been trying to push the Philippines in an anti-China direction. Uh, will the new government be amenable to a continuation of that trend? Or will they seek to do what President Duterte did in the beginning of uh, building better relations with China? The way I understand it is um, Bong Bong Marcos basically acts as if, basically he's trying to act as the antithesis of um, what the yellows were. So what the what the yellows were trying to do, he's basically going to say, well, you know, um, Rodrigo Duterte did something different, and I'm going to continue whatever Rodrigo Duterte was doing. So that's the reason. That's also one of the main reasons for why he got so much support. He never criticized Rodrigo Duterte, knowing fully well that uh, President Duterte had such has continues to have a very very uh, sky high approval rating and um, and a, a lot of support everywhere. And will the daughter uh, of Duterte be content to play second fiddle to Bong Bong? He's a very flamboyant fellow. Used to drive around uh, uh, England at university in his university days in a very flamboyant Rolls Royce and top hat and all. Uh, he is a figure who likes the limelight. Will Sarah Duterte be content to play second fiddle? Or is the idea that she will succeed him in due course? She probably will. She probably will succeed him in due, due course. But I, the, the main thing I think is she's at this point in time very cooperative. And I think, I mean, I think she's fine just playing second fiddle. Um, for one thing, of course, she is much younger than, uh, than Bong Bong Marcos. Um, and, you know, one of the things I, I, I think I just needed to add is, you know, when the uh, when the Marcos has, um, came back to the Philippines, they kind of understood what it was that made that kind of pissed people off. And they decided at some point that they were going to be gracious and nice to a lot of people. So despite getting so much criticism, they refrained from being toxic. They refrained from fighting back. They were always... I mean, I hate to say this because I've always had a very anti-Marcos background for the longest time. You know, I was, I was uh, a, a loyal yellow supporter long ago. I was, a, I was a Corey Aquino supporter long ago. But um, the the Marcoses, in fairness to them, I think they they decided to be nice people, to be quiet, hunker down, not call attention to themselves, and all that sort of thing. And somehow things things turned in their favor particularly when, um, when things didn't go well for, for Noi Noi Aquino. When Noi Noi Aquino had all of those blunders and all those boo-boos, failed on a lot of things, there's just really too many failures on his part. That's what changed public opinion so, so that you know, people who voted for Noi Noi Aquino and used to be yellow supporters became Marcos supporters in this election. I didn't vote for Bong Bong. I voted for it the... For the Democratic Socialist candidate, um, Norberto Gonzalez, but I am just telling it as it is. Of course, that's what we always uh, know of you. It's why you're here on this uh, mother of all talk shows. I, it's irresistible, though. I have to ask you. Uh, to my surprise, Imelda Marcos, I discover, is still alive. She's mm -hmm. 94. She has not lost her taste in uh, footwear. Is she <laughs> going to move into the presidential palace again with her son? Or will the mother-in-law be kept, uh, kept at some distance? We don't know. That's a possibility. She might be just going there um, regularly, you know, for visits. I don't know what, what the whole plan is, honestly. Um, 
it it may be possible that she might uh, she might yeah maybe I don't know stay there for the weekends or well, something. Well, it's in like the that. Asian it's it's in the Asian tradition, isn't it? Yes, you yes. You don't this, put your old folks in a in a in home, home like no, we do here. All. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, it's, it is a possibility. I think it's it's quite likely to happen. Yeah. She was, of course, a very famous uh, singer. The show is not over, as they say, until the fat lady sings. And it turns out uh, that the show isn't over for the Marcoses. Orion Perez, thanks for joining us on thanks the Mother for having me. of All Talk Shows.